For the lads, welcome back to Kosa Snow Podcast. My name is Kosi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. Now, Arsenal need a striker. We all know that. It is now um, no longer a secret. We are desperately need of a number nine. And we're going to be discussing Romelu Lukaku because he's one of the names now trending around the Arsenal topic to get a new striker. He's one of the strikers available on the market. He's already said no to Saudi Arabia. He wants to stay in Europe. He wants to play in the UEFA Champions League and Chelsea already wants him out. Now, it's a complicated one. It's a very, very complicated one because um, many people have actually called him a disloyal prat. Many people have actually called him a player without a man, actually without dignity. And they've also called him a narcissist. And I absolutely agree with them. However, when we come to the footballing side of Romel Lukaku, I've never been more um, genuinely interested in a player like Romel Lukaku. I really think Romel Lukaku would be the key to Arsenal's goals. I think Romel Lukaku would be fit to lead the line at Arsenal at least for one year or even two years. I'm going to be discussing why Arsenal need to sign Romel Lukaku and whether Romel Lukaku could actually be a much better option than Gabriel Jesus or even Edin Ketia uh, when Gabriel Jesus is actually injured. It's as simple as this. If you take Romel Lukaku at Arsenal, just type yes in the comment box below. If you don't take him at Arsenal, just type no in the comment box below. It's as simple as that. Nicola Tan needs option uh, in that number nine on that forward line. And Lukaku is one uh, player that has actually manifested as an opportunity. Hit the like button, subscribe to the podcast as well. Regardless of whether you want Lukaku or not, this is the Arsenal podcast. We all we talk everything Arsenal. So don't worry, it's a safe space. You can just hit the like button and subscribe as well. So um I was listening to Talk Sport yesterday and um um, one of the things that actually came up, I think, was uh, you, you know, uh, uh, in, in one of those uh, shows, was Arsenal cannot go into the next season without a striker. The problem, actually, is that we know that. I mean, any pundit who says that Arsenal cannot go into the second into the new season without a striker is doing lazy journalism. Is, is doing lazy punditry. Punditry. We already know that. The problem is. Who are we going to sign and what are the options on the market? So it was then suggested and it has been suggested that Arsenal should move in for Romel Lukaku as one of the strikers available on the market, but also one of the strikers that actually has played in the Premier League and understands uh, the dynamics of the league. Romelu Lukaku at the moment is 30. He's signed, uh, you know, he's signed to Chelsea um, uh, as, 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 as a player. But, of course, he spent the biggest part of his, uh, of his season last season at Inter Milan, who have decided they will actually not sign him. And he's now looking at going to either Juventus or staying at Chelsea for another season whether he's actually, where he's actually not very, very welcome. Should Arsenal go in for Romelu Lukaku? In my opinion, yes. Now, I, I completely agree with everyone who says Romelu Lukaku is not uh, fit to play for any other Premier League side right about now. But I disagree if they think that Romelu Lukaku is a bad player. I disagree if they think Romelu Lukaku will not score goals. I only agree with them because Romelu Lukaku in the last one year, in the last 12, 13 months has actually showed that he's a selfish guy, a selfish man who only cares about himself. So when he signed for Chelsea, you expected him to come from Inter Milan and concentrate on that career that actually had spent, um, that had led Chelsea to spend over £100 million on, on his signing. So expected him to, 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 to respect that. You expected him to focus on the Chelsea career. What he actually did, he flew out to Milan had an interview, I think it, it, it was with Sky Sports, and he literally just said, I've signed with Chelsea, but I don't like Chelsea, and I don't really feel happy at Chelsea. I want to go back to Inter Milan. Barely a year in his five-year deal. That was absolutely stupid. That was very, very um, childish. And I think I've, I did my reactions uh, on the Romelu Lukaku is, you know, incident on the 90 More podcast. But my problem with Romel Lukaku is that the debate has gone away from the interview to his abilities on the pitch. I mean, people are trying to degrade him as n uh, not a good enough striker, as a player who's actually not capable. 
And I don't think that is true. Romelu Lukaku has time and time again proven that he's one of the good strikers in Europe. You can testify that if you check his numbers for Belgium as a national team. Everton and his numbers will actually um, testify to that. West, Brom, West Bromwich Albion and his days there will actually tell you that he's a very good striker. And his days at Inter Milan will also tell you that he's a very, very good striker. So, should Aston sign Romelu Lukaku? In my opinion, I think we should, right? Whether we get him on a one-year deal, whether we get him on a, on a season-long loan deal, uh, which Chelsea probably could be willing um, to go for because there are no clubs interested in signing Romelu Lukaku. And Arsenal are not willing to sign a striker right now because we do not want to, you know, um, exceed our budget. But then I also think that we want to take our time. We want to find that perfect striker. I mean, everyone looks at Victor Resiman, Dzan Blahovic, but I think in the end... Arsenal might actually sign none of those guys. Arsenal, we might see Arsenal go and sign, um, you know, any other striker. Just like we signed Gabriel Jesus and no one expected. I expect Arsenal to go and sign a player that we've scouted for one or at least one and a half months. Sorry, one and a half years. So, Romain Lukaku then becomes a very, very viable option. One, I think he offers us something very different from what Edin Ketia offers us. Nketiah is a very good player with, um, with his back facing the opponent's goal. He, he drops into the midfield. Hold-up play is very good. He's got the ability to create chances for himself, but his finishing is down. Absolutely zero. With Romelu Lukaku, you have a player who definitely gives you closer to that. He's strong. He's Premier League built. I think his passing combinations um, are all right. We've seen that uh, at Inter Milan. I don't think he's a bad striker. And I think he's a more clinical player than Gabriel Jesus and Edin Ketia. Yes, uh, he's wasteful. And I'm going to say that. He's absolutely wasteful. So when you create five chances for him, he will score one or two. If you create ten chances for him, he will score three or two. Right? So he's a very wasteful striker. But at Arsenal... I don't think that is our problem. At Arsenal, what we are looking for, we are looking for someone who can bury some of the chances we are creating. Otherwise, uh, it's one of the seasons that have actually just started on the wrong note. It's one of the seasons that have, uh, that have started um, on a very, very bad side. Losing your number one striker, who is actually not that clinical, and keeping Edin Ketia, who is not clinical, but also who is not as good as Gabriel Aces. I'm going to talk about uh, the narcissism of uh, Lukaku and why probably Arsenal might not benefit from that. But this is what Romelu Lukaku would bring at Arsenal if we signed him for one year or even two years or even on a permanent. I think it's a player that is willing to cut his wages to stay in Europe. He's willing to do everything there is um, to, to stay in Europe. And that passage between Chelsea and Arsenal has proven to be like fruitful not fruitful in terms of giving us players that are good or giving them players that are actually good but fruitful in terms of when you want a player at chelsea you just call them and they'll give you that player if you want a player from arsenal you'll just call them and they'll give you that player if you're chelsea olivia Giro, ashley cole and um probably a couple of other players that i don't remember uh with arsenal signing players from chelsea you know even this summer we've done our uh, due diligence to get some players from there so the real point and the real issue with Romelu Lukaku is Arsenal are desperate and we are kind of becoming beggars. Beggars don't have a choice. I don't think we are in that position where we, we, we are just going to go, well, um, um, we want a striker, but we don't want you. We don't want this one and we don't, that one, we don't want that one. I think the key prerequisites the conditions for us to select a striker right now are three can he do a very good job in terms of scoring goals crossing making that ball cross over the line i think we should sign the striker can he link up with odegaard kai havers trossard uh martinelli and saka very well i think we should strike that uh, sign that striker and is he physical different from Gabriel Jesus, physical and good in the air, I think we should sign the striker. The elements I've just spoken to you are all elements of Romelu Lukaku's game. 
the, what I've just said there is a clear description of Romelu Lukaku. Highly talented, a good goal scorer, very good finisher. He's got that ability in the air, and he will bully players. Now, there, there, there are some games where the fluidity and the free-flowing football is actually not going to work. We've got to agree, and we've got to be honest with ourselves here. There are some times when um, you will need to bully yourself uh, through the way Sadio Mane actually helped Liverpool in such games. When Mo Salah was actually kept out of the game, when Roberto Firmino's uh, free-flowing moves and trickery was actually blocked off, there were times when Sadio Mane's brilliance and bully um, actually bullied, you know, bullied Liverpool into probably a title, probably a win. And that is what I want uh, Romelu Lukaku is for. Actually, my number one contender for that position would be Ivan Toni. Because Tony is such a very different striker. Like, he's so different. His holder play is very good. He's very, very physical. Good in the air. Takes penalties. Very confident. Clinical. But my problem with, uh, with, with um, Ivan Tony is that it's the same as Gabriel Jesus. You sign him now, you don't start the season with him. You'll have to wait another... How many? You, you, you have to wait another um, four, five months without playing that is half a season so it is useless to sign ivan tony now it would be much better if you signed him probably in the summer and that's why i think that Romelu lukaku if he's available on a short-term plan one year probably with uh arsenal covering his wages or half of his wages chelsea would be okay with that otherwise i don't see how chelsea benefit from keeping him he doesn't play for chelsea again and he doesn't um um, he, he's taking the wages. He's actually being a burden. I would rather him, you know, uh, if I were Chelsea, I would rather him at Arsenal. They cover probably 150,000 of his wages. We cover the other part, which is 150,000 probably uh, of his wages. Where does Romelu Lukaku rank among the, uh, the Premier League strikers we have um, in the league? I think there are around five strikers, the only five, that I would say would be better than Romelu Lukaku on his day. Erling Haaland is number one. Harry Kane is the other. And um, uh, of course, Kane has been very consistent. Haaland has also been very consistent over the years. The other strikers are actually up for debate, right? One would be Christopher Nkunku, who has been very consistent at RB Leipzig, but he's not done it at a bigger stage like Romelu Lukaku. The other striker, uh, in my opinion, who would be uh, better than Romelu Lukaku, would be Gabriel Jesus if he would finish his chances. The problem with Jesus is um, he's, he's got that similarity to Lukaku. They're very wasteful. So Jesus would also be slightly ahead of Romelu Lukaku um, if, he if he would take his chances and finish them. Actually, there are four strikers that I think would massively massively be better than uh, Romelu Lukaku. The likes of Rasmus Holland, all these other players, all those strikers have not proven like Romelu Lukaku has proven. Oh, probably uh, you, you could add um, uh, Mo Salah if you wanted to put him as a striker, if you wanted to uh, put him as a goal scorer. So in my opinion, humbly, I think Romelu Lukaku ranks among the top 10 strikers, top 6 strikers in the Premier League right now, and he would and the fortunes of so many Premier League clubs if they signed him. Does he miss chances? Yes. Now let's talk about the selfishness and narcissism and whether that actually would block his move to Arsenal. We know that character is very key when Mikel Arteta is going to sign you. If you're going to sign for Mikel Arteta, character is absolutely key. You've got to be um, a leader. You've got to have the experience, but your character has to be all right, right? So this is a, a young group of players. You don't need division in the dressing room. You don't need, um, you don't need um, um, uh, toxicity in the dressing room. You need a collective mind. You need a collective dressing room. The fact that he's a narcissist, the fact that he flats with Juventus, the fact that he flats with Inter Milan, and he flats with Chelsea as well. That is not a very good sign of a player like Romelu Lukaku. You, you look at the players Arsenal have signed this summer. They've chosen for 
they've chosen Arsenal over Bayern and Man City. Be it Trice, be it Timber, be it whoever we're signing, even David Raya. So that shows you that they are, they, are, they, are, they have made up their mind. That shows you that they are really concentrated. And that would be a key point in Mikelata going, you are a good striker. I could use you for a year, but you're disorganized. Your life, your mentality, your character uh, are a shambles and you're clearly disorganized. The one thing I'm going to say, though, with Romelu Lukaku is it's time for Arsenal to be ruthless. If you have Romelu Lukaku, who is um, a disorganized player, but he's your key to competing with Erling Haaland at Manchester City, I think you've got to take him. I think we've got to take him. He is in the caliber of a 25-plus goal scorer a, a, a season. With Martin Odegaard, we would make our, uh, our playmaker better. With Romelu Lukaku, sorry, we would make our playmaker better in Martin Odegaard. And I think Odegaard would have better, um, you know, chances of scoring more goals as he arrives into the penalty area because of that huge hold-up ability of Romelu Lukaku. And we would have another, another option, especially against short, strike, short defenders like Lisandro Martinez. You would score as many headers as you can. I think there is passion in Romelu Lukaku. He's only 30. We have already seen the longevity of strikers and their careers. I think it's a good deal. I think it's a good deal. I think it's a very good deal. I'll take him at Arsenal. Romelu Lukaku to Arsenal. Let's have the comments flying in. Right? Let's have the f comments flying in.